With the release of Steam VR Beta 1.16.1, Valve provide a new setting to give more flexibility with the management of frame reprojection and predictive frames. They call this setting throttling behavior, and it can be located in the per application area of the video settings within Steam VR. I wanted to see how this could help with the general VR experience in certain demanding games. So let's take a quick look. Immersed Robot I have recently been playing No Man's Sky at the 80Hz refresh rate in my index, as I found I have generally been able to keep that native FPS for most areas. However, while recording footage in OBS performance does drop, and on this particular, highly demanding planet, I was fluctuating around reprojection of 40 FPS as you can see. I upped the refresh rate to 144Hz to try to capture this fluctuation in reprojection more clearly. As you can see, I'm sometimes able to achieve 72 FPS, settling on reprojection, while other times the frame rate jumps around. This causes more noticeable stuttering in the headset, and combating this is the primary reason for implementing this new feature. Standard reprojection allows games to run at half frame rate, interpolating every other frame, to maintain FPS. It does this on an automatic basis, and it can cause issues when half frame rate can't quite be maintained in more demanding titles. This new feature in Steam VR allows users to lock the frame rate at varying multiplying factors of the native headset refresh rate in order to better manage this reprojection. By switching the throttling behavior to fixed, it opens up a further two settings. The first allows you to lock the frame rate to a lower value. In this instance, I decided to select 48 frames per second. This means that now, rather than having one interpolated frame, Steam VR would lock it to two. As you can see, my frame rate is now locked at 48 FPS, allowing for an incredibly smooth experience while walking around the landscape. The sacrifice with having this selected, however, is that more reprojection based artifacts such as blurring and distortions will be created when moving objects around in your view. In this case, my hands and multi tool have distinct blurring effects due to the increase in interpolated frames. This isn't easy to capture from desktop acquired footage, but I attempted to show the effect through the lens of my headset. It's still not clear to see, but the blurring and distortions are just about noticeable. For even more demanding games on lower-end systems, users have the ability to be even more aggressive with this behavior. Locking frame rate down to 24 FPS gave more reprojection-based artifacts, and although actually walking around the landscape still felt remarkably smooth, all things considered, the experience overall was severely compromised. Locking frame rate at 60 for 120 Hz, or 45 for 90 Hz was a great experience overall, with minimum artifacts. The other setting that is opened up by choosing fixed throttling behavior is called additional prediction. This allows motion smoothing to apply for up to 6 frames in order to lower demand on the system. While trying this briefly at 100 milliseconds of extrapolation on 90 Hz, I found the results to be extremely jarring. By allowing motion smoothing to have this level of prediction, the experience suffered from severe and uncomfortable distortions and warping in the geometry. Again, this is not easily captured with desktop footage, so I tried my best to capture this effect through the lenses too. This wasn't a setting I wanted to increase too much in any game, as I found the artifacts far too jarring for me personally. But motion smoothing can certainly help when used sparingly and when not ramping up this frame prediction setting too high. Finally, I decided to take things to an extreme. I selected 80Hz refresh rate in the Valve Index then locked frame rate all the way down to 13.3 FPS. This means I would be interpolating 5 frames for every one true frame. The result of doing this was a little bizarre. Although walking around the world and rotational head movement felt incredibly smooth, everything around me looked as if it was almost moving with stop-motion animation. The animals and ships were juddering along in a very peculiar way, in a world which still behaved smoothly in terms of my own perceived movement. Overall, I welcome these settings as anything that gives users more control over their experience will be a benefit in my opinion. 
However, I think these settings should be used sparingly and reserved for only the most demanding games which are not settling well by using the automatic settings provided by Steam VR. I encourage people who use Steam VR compositor based headsets such as the Index or Vive to try these settings and let me know in comments your own experience in more demanding games. I'm especially interested to see how this helps something like Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in VR for example. Well that's pretty much it for this video. Please hesitantly tap the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more concise and informative VR content. You can also join our Discord by clicking on the link in the description of this video. And, as always, I'll catch you on the flippity flip.